Committee for Thursday, April 18th. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this community. I thank you for the opportunity to serve this community as through my other board mates here. Lord, give us the strength, give us the, give the community the strength to shine bright, to be the light on the hill uh, for our county and our country. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. No announcements to be made, public comment, uh, five minute per person limit for comment on agenda items. Please come forward if you have anything to discuss about the agenda. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Steve Brubaker. Um, a request for the board um, coming tonight to speak about the uh, last board uh, supervisors meeting. We uh, requested that to be placed on the agenda, the resolution that Lancaster County um, commissioners passed as far as a non-sanctuary county. And uh, we were just requesting, thank you, by the way, for putting it on the agenda, um, just requesting that at the appropriate time in the agenda, could we talk about that as opposed to now? Well, um it's up for discussion tonight amongst the board at that time. I mean, if you have anything you'd like to say about it now, that I mean, it'd be you nice. You prefer that? I prefer that, correct. Okay, all right. Thank you. Sure. Um, so, yeah, so tonight on the agenda is the um, non-sanctuary township resolution uh, policy, which is up for um, a motion and a vote. And... Um, I'm just here tonight to, first and foremost, I want to say that before my words get misconstrued, twisted, or somehow falsified, I want to let it be very clearly known that um, immigration is very vital to our country. Um, our country has been driven for years on immigration, on immigrants. We are uh, the melting pot. Um, so uh, I want to be very clear about that. However, we're requesting that when people come over to our country and they want to live the liberties and freedoms that we all experience as United States citizens, that they do it in a legal and proper way. And that's what the resolution, I think it was Resolution 33, that Lancaster County uh, commissioners voted upon at their March meeting to make Lancaster County a non-sanctuary county. Yes, that one. Um, just a few things, uh, you know, we back the resolution. Number one, it upholds the, the Constitution of the United States that um, becoming a United States citizen, if immigrants want to come to this country, that they have to do it lawfully, that they have to do it legally. Um, and you, as elected officials, took an oath to uphold our Constitution. Um, so, the second thing uh, is that we would like to allow our police department and our law enforcement the ability to do their jobs in enforcing the laws without tying their hands. So, Lancaster City, uh, in their February meeting, they voted to be a sanctuary city. Well, now the Lancaster Police Force, unfortunately, their hands are tied whenever there is uh, criminal activity that occurs and it's from an illegal uh, immigrant. Um, so this resolution is very clear. It will not tie uh, our police, uh, police force uh, hands in that matter. Uh, thirdly, um, you know, illegal immigration provides a financial strain uh, to the community. Um, we see that right now with the cities that are running rampant. Uh, New York City right now. The mayors are come, mayor is coming out and saying, you know, we, we need help from the federal government. Uh, and that uh, really they're wishing that they didn't make 
good choice. How many sanctuary city? I don't think we want East Kukalka to be overrun either. Um, and finally, uh, safety. Safety is of extreme importance, as I hope you would agree. Um, last year, if you remember, in uh, the summer of 2023, and uh, there was that jailbreak that occurred. Um, just was it Central PA? Chester, Chester, County. Chester County. Thank you. And that turned out to be an illegal immigrant, and um, had the community in a panic. I mean, for weeks there were resources. The police were out looking for him, and um, it, it just put the community in a state where they didn't have to be. Um, they could just frighten that community. And then, of course, I'm going to use the uh, Lake and Riley story of the 22-year-old Georgia student that was viciously uh, murdered by an illegal uh, immigrant. So, for those various reasons, I hope that the township, uh, that the board adopts the resolution, this resolution for non-sanctuary township. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. And then we'll go down to action items. Meeting minutes for April 4th for approval. Any corrections? I make a motion to approve the April 4th meeting minutes as presented. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Moving on to uh, 395 Mose Hill Stormwater Waiver Improvement, Mike. Yes, thank you. Um, tonight uh, on your agenda is a uh, stormwater project for 395 Mose Hill Road. Uh, this project uh, is consisting of a new single family dwelling and driveway uh, on property, vacant property, and they are requesting approval of their stormwater plan. In addition to that, they are asking for two waivers. One waiver is from showing all existing features within 200 feet of the site. Uh, I found that there's sufficient information on the plans uh, to conduct a review, so I would be in support of that waiver. And number two, the waiver would be from strict compliance with the conveyance facility criteria um, requirements for swales, grading, and pipe diameters. Um, all of the piping on the property is privately owned, so it would not be dedicated to the township and all has been properly sized. Uh, utilizing stormwater uh, methodology and calculation to make sure it's sized in accordance with the code. Um, NPDES permit has already been issued, so we had no objection provided that the DEP was acceptable for those items as well. Um, we also have before you a stormwater management maintenance and easement agreement uh, and establishing the uh, financial security for that project that's noted in the agreement. Is this property address uh, it's on the south side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the improvement agreement, on the agenda it says 395 Moons Hill. The improvement agreement says 335. That's their address. Okay, that is their That's address. That's interesting address. Yeah. yeah. Is there anyone here representing the plan? Would you uh, like that anything? No, I've got a number from retail, so you're doing work with the, the property owner. I think Mike summarized everything. Really, we're just requesting a, a few minor waivers for the storm ordinance and um, looking to get approval on that, the plan and financial security and other items. But if any other questions, we'd be happy to uh, help you out and hopefully provide any answers. Any questions? I'd like to make a motion to approve a stormwater plan, plan waivers as noted in the February 26, 2024 review letter issued by Technicon Enterprises, improvement guarantee agreement, and stormwater maintenance and easement agreement for various improvements to be installed at 395 Mountain Road. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Next on the agenda is 935 Stone uh, Hill. I will be... Uh, I'll be abstaining from voting from the improvement guarantee uh, for Sweetwater Propane at tonight's meeting. I'm abstaining from the vote due to a business relationship with the company. 
In accordance with the Ethics Act, I will announce to you both conflict prior to the vote. And we have your signed statement that will be a part of the uh, record of this meeting. And just for the board, um, this was a land development that was conditionally approved uh, at the end of last year, I believe. Uh, this is the Associated Improvement Guarantee Agreement that was drafted by uh, Matt's office, and uh, that's before you for action. Again, this is for a propane uh, storage area uh, to the rear of an existing property on Stone Road. Okay. Any questions? Anyone representing the plan would like to add anything? No? No. I'll make a motion to approve and improve to approve an improvement guarantee agreement for various improvements to be installed at 935 Stone Road. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 No. Yes. Yep. Okay. Motion carries. All right, next on the agenda we have 561 Harold's Hill security release. Yes, this is a uh, small project, stormwater project uh, for a garage that was built by the Millers. Uh, they have installed their stormwater management, it's been inspected and approved by our office. We're recommending a release of the escrow in the amount of $5,660.60 for that project. Anyone here representing that project would like to add anything? I'll make a motion to approve the release in full of security poster for stormwater improvements made at 561 Harold Hill in the amount of $5,660.60. I'll second that. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next up, 500 Holtzman security release. Yes, this is a project on uh, 500 Holtzman Road for a new single family dwelling and driveway. Uh, the project's actually been done for some time, and we are closing this out uh, for the release of the escrow in the amount of $7,370. Anyone here representing that plan would like to add? No? Make a motion to approve the release in full of security poster for stormwater improvements made at 500 Holtzman Road in the amount of $7,370. Second that. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 203 Royal Horse Security Release. And again, this is also a small project stormwater uh, management facility for a new garage. Uh, the Lindsay's have installed that and We've inspected it. Uh, the release amount would be in the amount of $8,250. Anyone representing that? No? I'll make a motion to approve the release in full of security posted for stormwater improvements made at 203 Royal Horseway in the amount of $8,250. I'll second that. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 762 Smokestown security release. Yes, this is uh, for Clayton Homes. This was a single family dwelling. Again, this project's been completed for some time. We just received the as built plans and everything's acceptable. We're recommending release of the remaining amount of $1,737.16. Anyone here representing that? Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the release in full of security poster for stormwater improvements made at 762 Smokestown Road in the amount of $1,737.16. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. That concludes your report, Mike? It does. That's all I have for today. All right. Yep. Thank you. Moving on to the interfund <coughs> bill list and payroll. Okay, uh, Treasurer's report for this evening. Uh, general fund bank account lists the bills in the amount of $3,519.35 for the week of April 4th of 2024, $285.55 also for the week of April 4th, 2024, and $65,188.40 for the week of April 11th of 2024. Any questions there? 
Seeing none, I make a motion to approve. Second that. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, we, we have a light fund bank account list of bills in the amount of $18.90 for the week of April 4th, 2024, and $15,586.05 for the week of April 11th of 2024. Any questions there? Seeing none, I make a motion to approve. I'll second. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, and we have a hydrant fund bank account list of bills in the amount of $19.25 for the week of April 4th, 2024, and $585.20 for the week of April 11th, 2024. Is there any questions there? Seeing none, I make a motion to approve. I'll second that. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Mm -hmm. And we have an electronic list of bills for the pay period of March 24th, 2024 to April 6th of 2024 in the amount of $94,599.05. I make a motion to approve. Second that. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Treasurer. Thank you. Down to Department Reports. Chief. Good evening. Good evening. The Chief's report for the month of March 2024. Uh, first, we had a few notable arrests during the month. Um, an effort a man was charged with discharging a firearm into an occupied structure, criminal mischief, um, excuse me, and criminal mischief after a month long investigation. He's charged with firing a single gunshot round from a handgun through the front window of, it, of a business in the 1000 block of North Reading Road. Uh, he was arraigned, uh, no one was injured. Um, he was arraigned and released on $2,000 bail. A Lancaster man is charged with two counts of theft by unlawful taking after an investigation that started in February of 2024 involving the theft of approximately 50 gallons of diesel fuel. Um, and these were, the diesel fuel was taken from parked work trucks. Uh, they were parked, um, what we refer to as the PPL lot, but it's uh, a small lot off of uh, Lesher Road at South Money Creek Road. The trucks were parked there um, overnight. and. Um, this individual was cycling diesel. Mm -hmm. Ready man was charged with forgery and theft by unlawful taking after a lengthy investigation and a stolen and forged check. He sold a check from a business in the first block of Denver Road, altered and forged the document. Officers also located four individuals and took them into custody on outstanding arrest warrants. They were turned over to the issuing authorities. And then we did uh, a few. Um, week-long speed studies. The first one was in the first block of South Reevestown Road. The average speed recorded was 32.5 miles an hour during that week. The highest speed recorded was 58 miles per hour. Uh, and the 58, that occurred uh, around 3 o'clock in the morning. The posted speed limit there, of course, is 25 miles an hour. We conducted another week-long speed study in the 700 block of South 4th Street in Denver Borough. The average speed recorded was 30.5 miles per hour during that week. The highest speed recorded was 60, and that was at 7 p.m. And that posted speed limit is also 25. We performed another week-long speed study in the 700 block of North 6th Street in Denver Borough. The average speed recorded there was 33.2, so it's gone down a little bit. The highest speed recorded was 65, and that was at 11 o'clock at night. Again, posted speed limit is 25. As a result of previous speed studies, we conducted a speed enforcement detail in the 200 block of East Lancaster Avenue in Denver Borough. During the detail, nine citations were issued for speeding violations. The highest speed recorded was 50. Again, that's a 25 mile per hour zone. We conducted a speed enforcement detail in the 400 block of Hans Town Road here in the township. And we, our officers issued 12 citations for speeding violations. The highest speed recorded was 64. And that's a 35 mile, mile per hour zone. 
On a happy note, on March 12th, we, I assigned an officer to partic participate in the Light Up the Night event at Penn State Health Children's Hospital in Hershey. Uh, this is the third year for the event. Um, this is our first year participating in this. This is uh, an event where local law enforcement, EMS, and fire companies from around central Pennsylvania uh, meet up at the hospital. They form a procession. Um, they light up their emergency lights, and they drive through the, the campus of the hospital. Um, I wasn't there. The officer, uh, our officer that was, said that children line up outside, the ones that are able to, um, and then there's others that uh, go to the window and watch from the window. <clears throat> so I'm happy that we were able to participate in that. Uh, our school resource officer, Eric Fisher, participated in the bicycle safety program in conjunction with the Lancaster County Mennonite Safety Committee. Officer Fisher uh, presented a bicycle safety course uh, to children at the Brutus Grove Road School, as well as an Acreville Roadhouse School. Officer Rachel Odenwald read the first and second graders at the Reedstown Elementary School during that month. Um, it's close to the badges. It's very popular with the children. And three officers attended the week-long crisis intervention team training. Uh, the CIT is what it's referred to. That training uh, provides officers with the foundation necessary to assist individuals with mental illness and or addiction. Um, this was a commitment that the former chief uh, made in 100% um, in support of getting all of our officers trained in this. It's a week-long training, so uh, we have to uh, just send a few at a time just for manpower reasons. But uh, that leaves only three more officers to be trained, and then the whole department will be trained in CIT. During the month of March, officers responded to 570 calls for service here in the township and 132 calls for service in Denver Borough. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Chief. All right, my next public works building, new business. So I, I wanted to bring up, um, if you guys recall, uh, we had got a request uh, from a member of the rec board uh, about considering uh, bringing the board down to five members instead of seven because they haven't been able to meet yet this year for a forum. I think we have a vacancy or two on there as well. Um, I just wanted to throw it out there to see what you guys uh, thought about that. Yes, we have a rain in the house here. Has it been a, uh, an ongoing problem with um, scheduling conflicts? Yeah, we, we have four members currently, and one of our members is Terry Maxwell, and she has accounting to do during tax season, so she was <laughs> not able to be here at all, and a couple other members just are periodically there. So it would be to everybody's benefit if we lowered it to five uh, members instead of seven. I, I had checked with the state status and they say five, seven, or nine members. I guess it can always be something taken back at a point when there's other people interested. Sure. Yeah, it would require an ordinance. Yeah. yeah. We have two vacancies right now. Three. So the, so the entire membership is required to appear for a forum to be met, and that's the, that's the challenge. Okay. <clears throat> so that could go on, on a future agenda. Right? I, I would draft the board against that. determined to put it on a future agenda. Yeah. yeah. And then we can take it from there. Okay. Anything else? New business? No? All right. Old business. Uh, right Eversol Land Development Plan 2021-03. Development update that everyone's been waiting for. Yeah. Uh, good evening. Go around sure you're right Eversol. 
Nice to see everybody again. Um, congratulations. I haven't been here since, uh, since January. Um, Mr. Ryan asked me to come in and give an update on the project. So I'll just do a brief over, overview, but I know the focus is, is the next steps for, for Hill Road. So I don't know how much of an overview I need to give. I think you can see we're making pretty good progress uh, on the site and building. Uh, so we're, we're on track there, which is nice. Our tenant is still on board and has uh, come to inspect the building multiple times. It's happened with our progress. Um, and we're, we're, we're anxious to, to start moving, moving things in. Um, the only outstanding item on the project itself is still our pen up so when we met back in July, I had anticipated that we'd have our PennDOT permit in hand. End of year, we're still going back and forth with PennDOT to get that HOP for our phase one access. Um, I had Jared Neal here from Traffic Planning and Design. He's our traffic consultant. I didn't know how much detail he wanted to get into on that, but he's here in case he had any technical questions that I, I couldn't answer. So when we spoke in July, our schedule sort of back off of that permit in hand date on phase one from, from DOT. That's now pretty close, according to, to Jared. So this is actually good timing, because uh, we're ready to kick off the hard design of the Hill Road realignment. And when I say that, keep in mind, we have a pretty complete preliminary design of that realignment done with grading, formal and management. It, hasn't been reviewed yet, yet by Matt's office. It was only the previous engineer. Um, what I suggest is we sit down with staff because there still are some decisions that need to be made, uh, in particular with the disposition of existing Hill Road and how that's going to function with our with our realignment and new road. Uh, so, Tommy, I can coordinate with you to set that up. Um, and I guess you can coordinate with the board to to see how we want to handle that. Um, that's where we are. So we're, we're kicking them off the final design of, of that road based on the prelim. Again, I'll put it in front of Matt so he my story is like, I might, sorry, sorry, uh, is it his informal blessing? Um, and, then, and then we'll be ready to go. So our intent is once we have the DOT permit in hand, we'll be ready to start issuing plans and, and applying for permits for phase two. Um, part of the reason DOT has taken so long is number one, it's DOT. Uh, number two, we, we tripped over a couple speed bumps uh, cutting our own way. Uh, but most importantly, number three, is they've been reviewing this entire phase one project, keeping phase two in mind. As a matter of fact, the last couple of rounds of comments, their, comment, their technical comments were really important to making sure what we build in phase one is going to easily transition into phase two signalized intersection for the new field road. So from the PennDOT standpoint, we have to make a lot of progress as part of our existing uh, pending permit. So that's that's where we are. So John, forgive me. I have an email that you sent out Tuesday, April 16th at 1.37 p.m. that Tommy just sent the board today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a part of it, if, if you're okay with that. <clears throat> the township has not yet seen any design of the relocated Hill Road scenario to date, and no near future date has been presented. As you are aware, the relocation of Hill Road as part of the applicant's project is extremely critical to the township and their desire to see this happen as soon as possible. The township has worked with the applicant in order to keep the project moving forward, but it's been over a year since there has been any real discussion on the status of Hill Road, relocation, and or any plans provided to the township. The current operation of Hill Road and Route 272 is unsatisfactory in implementing the relocation of Hill Road to a new signalized intersection as part of the applicant's project was and is a top priority of the township staff and board of supervisors. I had to read that because I couldn't agree more. And 
you guys are more than aware that we allow you guys to move forward with this building because of the whole realignment of Hill Road. That's a huge part of this project. Just this, just this evening around 6, I had to make a left-hand turn. I was literally there four minutes trying to make a left-hand turn. Traffic was that hard. Like, it was that hard to get out. And every time I had to second-guess myself if I was going to get hit, people were flying up and down the road. So I, I can't stress it enough how important realigning this road is. And I'll be honest, I've been here now, this is my third year. I'm, I'm very disappointed that we haven't seen anything. The, I mean, the residents keep asking about it. The residents keep asking what's going to go in this concrete big building. The residents keep asking, is it going to be painted or is it going to look like that? I get questions every day about the big concrete building on 272. That's what everybody refers to it as. And I've also got comments of the berm in the front. I thought that was going to cover the building. Well, I said it covered a quarter of it, not all of it, but, you know, these were, uh, before I was even supervising, these conversations were happening. Um, I think the township has been more than uh, helping, honestly, Bill. I mean, I don't think you can disagree to that. Uh, I do not disagree. Uh, you know, people say it's tough to do anything in East Cocalico or whatnot. You know, this case in particular, I think we we all wanted to see something go there. I'm not agreeing that it was a warehouse. No, no offense to you, the warehouse is there. It was before my time, but it was better than what was there. But again, the the whole Hill Road realignment, that whole intersection, you know, it's, it's it's very 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 important, especially. Early on, John, I think uh, they said they wanted the realignment, and we were asking PennDOT if we could have right only into Current Hill Road, and they said absolutely not. It needs to be completely shut off. That's correct. And then they also said uh, Park Place has that little entrance there. They said that has to be shut off so people don't cut across from there as well, right? Correct. So, I mean, we're all we're all aware of this, and. I'm just disappointed, I'm honestly, very disappointed that here we are two years later. It looks like you guys are lining up for curb and pavement soon from the road. I don't access the site, obviously. And we still don't have an HOP. There's, there's two properties there that you guys are probably going to need sign-offs from. What's the update on that? Did you guys get sign-offs already? We have a formal signed agreement uh, from larger piece, and we have an agreement in, in, uh, in kind. It's in draft form, but we've had to sit down with a smaller property in the township neighbor. Um, so what about the gas station? That's signed off on, as well as Harper Farm. So the gas station already signed off? Yes. And that was submitted to DOT. I don't know if they crossed paths with the last review letter or, or what happened. No, I think it will. by the time we had that, it wasn't part of that special but they, they have that now in their hands. You haven't seen that yet? I haven't seen it. You haven't either. So the the most important the, the most important people here, the township engineer and the manager, have not seen this document. And again, I just sitting here, multiple meetings that you guys have attended. I always hear you guys cry mercy that the tenant's going to walk, the tenant's going to leave. If we don't meet deadlines, the tenants this or the equipment's already in storage the building has to go I mean I've heard I've heard it all but we're not seeing any I'm not seeing anything that you guys are willing there's no communication put it that way on your guys part with our engineer manager about this hill road realignment the people signing off the proper people signing off and you know are you guys holding your end of the book uh, your, your end of the stick here that you know that, they just said they haven't seen or heard anything. So is, is that document, has that document been signed? Or is, are we just saying it's been signed? I, I, I don't know. So I, I agree with everything you said here tonight. 
100%, uh, as well as uh, I'll take responsibility for, for not communicating as well as uh, I should have with the township on our progress and our thoughts and our continuing to change the timeline. Getting this stuff done so that it coincides with what we know the DOT. So the reason we backed off of the DOT approval date is we know they're going to be the critical path on this phase two part of the project. And we thought a month or two before we got our first permit in hand, our phase one permit, is when we would start, you know, really putting pen and paper on, on the final design. So I have not communicated in the interim since we met mid-summer last year to discuss this. Um, so I apologize. I agree with everything you said today. And it's, it's my responsibility. It's on me to, to do better. And that lack of communication stops. And, and, and also, just to add for the public's knowledge as well, I mean, we're all aware. Mm -hmm. There's a deadline for the grant money that you guys, that you guys need to get. And that is June, right? Six months to uh, from the execution date, which was uh, late January. And that, that and that's coming up as well. You know, I don't I, I don't know. I mean, I, I again, I'm, I just I don't know. You guys are gonna you guys are waiting for stuff. We're waiting for stuff. What what's what's gonna happen here? We can't be doing it all. We can't, we, you know, you guys have to hold your end of the board. I mean, but again, I'll, I'll say it again. I know the people want to see Hill Road be aligned. If it don't happen now, it's not going to happen. And adding more traffic there, we, we uh, if you guys add just a driveway and no Hill Road, that's, it's going to make it even worse, right? Another driveway right there. Attached to, attached to the, the gas station driveway, right next to each other, right? Makes everything a lot worse. I guess my question is, the, the gas station, have they actually signed off with the improvements or have they just haven't responded? That's, no. They signed the HOPs, they sure. are, and the, the form that we... And then the DAA, and then they were, yeah. And that form that acknowledges that these improvements are going to be done on their behalf. We got that for the last submission. I, I assume the township's copied on all of our submissions, but maybe it crossed paths. Yeah. yeah, so so we got comments back, and we had some things that we needed to discuss with PennDOT. So PennDOT required, like, if you have issues, we had, we had actually three of them. So we have two separate HOPs for this phase one. One deals with the driveway, the other one deals with what's happening down at, um, at Colonel Howard. So we have two separate HOPs that were submitted. We had three items that we needed to speak with PennDOT. Those conversations happened last week, and and um, actually today. <laughs> so so uh, minutes were provided, and those were all resolved. So those are kind of like the three outstanding kind of big big ticket items that we needed to walk and have a conversation with Penn. Now, one was the um, kind of what, what what are we going to do with an existing left turn lane that's ultimately going to be um, the existing left that goes into Hill is going to be modified. So how do they want this to? Be handled in this interim condition. That got resolved. We had an issue I 20 with an inlet that was not placed uh, over top of a certain utility line. We wanted to make sure that that design was satisfactory. And then down at Colonel Howard, we're extending um, the left turn lane, that median behind it. So we wanted to have a conversation with that. They wanted us to, to tweak our design a little bit. That's all been resolved. Now we're working on refining those, those improvements, and then everything's going to go back and depend on it. So that, that's where we're at now. Um, John, you've seen the signal plan that was prepared, and that was part, that's part of a phase two improvement. But um, to, to John's credit, it's, it's a great point. He wanted to make sure when phase two comes in, it's <coughs> literally put up mass alarms. All the conduit, all the everything else is going to be in place, the ADA ramps. So that was all uh, configured into that signal plan. We got the TP-160 form from the township, so that will be ready to be submitted as soon as the permit's in place, the, the phase one permit. And then when that <coughs> signal permit is issued, at that point, um, it, it all, it's all going to align with what's in phase one. So it's, it, it's a, there's a bunch of little steps here that we have to, to work through, and, and PennDOT can be difficult, they're very particular, um, and there's been a lot of changing faces at the PennDOT side. There's some things that were acceptable, 
I mean, they aren't, and so we ended up having a few few more conversations than we anticipated with them. But I'm glad to report that we feel that these issues have been resolved today. Um, I can, I'll concur with what Jared said. Technically, with technical comments, they were 99 percent through. These items you talked about, we actually reviewed, and part of our response included that response back to head on the inlet striping. Yeah. Again, we wanted to look at the intersection, so we went out and constructed one time on there. The paving's done, the warning's done, ramps, conduits, everything was in place at the intersection. So the lane work would be done would be for the back of the entrance back off the hill. When the signal came in, all that work would be done, so we wouldn't have to go out and start 272 again. The big item still was those releases of sign offs. We, again, we received none of that information, and we, we know that's a, that can be a long lead type item if nobody signs. So again, if those are signed and it's moved through the process with PennDOT, I guess my question is your expected date of opening the facility, and then how does that tie in with getting your permit to get construction to uh, roll this to dovetail together? Yeah, I guess it's got a little type of work we're still on the schedule, assuming PennDOT doesn't come up with another round of, of new comments, which <coughs> sounds like that, that meeting would feel resolved. Hopefully, it's all day to be come up. Yeah. A lot of our comments have been new comments and trying to system uh, not system going to system. complain about that. But we'll, we'll see the same thing for, for the next phase, hopefully quicker, since they've been reviewing a lot of that phase two technical stuff as part of our comment. Yeah, maybe the only thing that I'll add to, to the phase two from PennDOT is the removal. So everything that's happening outside of Pet so Hill Road attaching to uh, the driveway that's being constructed, that's all outside of PennDOT right of way. So that's just, just through the township's review. The only element of that that needs to be reviewed by PennDOT would one be the signal plan, which is which is done and completely reviewed and approved by the township, um, but also the removal of Hill Road. So that will be an exhibit that's put together. That should be a very quick permit. Hey, this is how we're going to modify it. It's just a removal of an asset. It's what PennDOT wants to hear. So I don't really envision a ton of issues with, with the phase two permit. And I think I was just maybe look at the <coughs> timing. I mean, if everything aligns and the stars align and they give you technically approve your right away plans, approve, they need to record it. Those who need to record. So those need to get recorded. Once they're recorded, then they can issue the permit. And then in the meantime, you get a partial letter of credit, yep. you can get everything recorded. So you're two, three months down the road here, I'm assuming. So assume everything lines up May, June, July. I mean, you're July, August, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, and then I guess construction season. I guess and again, that's what I was trying to figure out what your opening date is. Uh, you know, the building looks like August is sometime once to be completed. You know, what's, what happens between the time you get out there? It's not going to be able to be built in a month, so you know, it's quite a bit of work and it's not out there. So again, just trying to get a timeline of when you think the building is going to the door, and once construction will be ready to go for the driveway. And the other part. So they're planning on opening prior to anything even happening to re the realignment of the whole road. Yes, that's right. Yes. Right. So we're going to be living this misery misery for how long? That's that's the next that's question. The next question yeah. I think that's a concern uh, that you guys are in, and then phase two falls away. I guess phase two is only basically, from what I'm hearing, phase two is strictly the hill road realignment. Is that correct? That's right. So and closure of the existing one. Right. Um, so that is obviously the concern you guys get phase one done, everybody's happy, everybody's making money, except phase two just kind of gets kicked down the road and never gets finished because we don't have, we have problems with PennDOT, we have problems with this, problems with that. Um, I fully understand your concern. Can we get and, uh, what? Excuse me, go ahead. And uh, I'm committed, Jersey. We committed a year plus ago and remain committed to, to doing this. We understand how important it is to the township. Getting a jump start on the line six months ago, we would have just been sitting and waiting, frankly. Um, but we're full speed now. I'm going to set up a meeting with the township uh, staff level to decide how we're going to handle the existing hell road, the disposition of that. And that's really the only question that remains to be answered. Um, we have a preliminary design of the actual road connection. John, maybe, maybe you didn't see it, but it was submitted originally as part of our land development plan before we separated it out. But we got to the point where we had a pretty competent design, fully graded, stormwater management, EMS, uh, everything shown from a preliminary standpoint. Um, 
So we're going to pick that up, dust it off, send it back out to the consultants, and, and go to final design with those, with those plans and modification of our NPDES permit. I'll coordinate with Tommy on, on how we do that. Um, whether we can be out in or whether the cash pass to co sign is out, we'll, we'll work that out. Um, so I'm committing to going full speed now, regardless of any additional hiccups with DOT going phase one. So, as Jared was saying, we don't need permits to do what needs to happen right over here. We only need permits basically to be able to shut down Hill Road from a PennDOT perspective, correct? And at, at I'm just saying, just speaking PennDOT permits is all we need from PennDOT is, is to close that. But in order to start breaking dirt back here, we would need to get the plan, stormwater, everything else. Right. Is there a reason we can't start doing all of that now? Before, I mean, irregardless of what PennDOT right. is saying, the field road, why can't we start working towards phase two now instead of waiting for PennDOT permits? That's, that's, that's exactly what I'm talking, talking about. I mean, Okay. To take the preliminary plans that, that we had already developed and send them back out. Yeah. You know, they were with the previous consultant, so I don't know if I've seen those. I don't know if I've seen John too. What I was going to ask and suggest is can we get a timeline that anticipates a reasonable response from Pentagon? And, you know, Mike and I and John. Um, we work in countless municipalities. We hear this, this incredible story every night. Uh, you know, John and I were on a call today uh, for one of our developer clients. This is all okay, the timeline. Uh, the time crunch with PennDOT is credible. So assume a reasonable response time by PennDOT because you need input from us, that timeline will allow us to be ready to quickly respond when we receive things from you, rather than getting it, not knowing if it's coming in today or next week, and then having to put it into our plan of work. We can anticipate it and be ready to respond promptly. <clears throat> and just as a aside, another reminder, the intersection and the new hill road across our property in phase one is a driveway, but we designed that to township road standards. So that will be constructed, and that's about 40% of hill road realignment. It's 35, 40% it will be constructed, and it's already under construction. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue. I'm, I'm committing tonight to, to go full speed. And uh, you'll see progress. And I'll report back whenever you would like me to. If Tommy feels I'm not being responsive, um, I'll, he won't. He won't. Well, he, he won't. You, you just yeah. have to understand. You you could you could spec that driveway to a to a highway to 222 and not finish it and not finish over it. You know what I mean? At, at the end of the day, talk's cheap. Anybody can say anything. We need to see some facts. And that, that's why I said I'm disappointed. I, I would like to see the facts. And if we don't do our due diligence on this side, you guys will run all over us. And that's that. I understand. It, it will not happen, but I understand your perspective on that. It won't. We're fully committed. We feel like a partner with you on this project. We understand how important it is to you. We're, we're on it. We're on it. We've, we've already capitalized. We've, we've set aside money for it. The township holds. We're, we're fully committed. So I'll go full speed here. So with Mr. Krem's comment, do you have any idea when we can actually get a timeline? When will Mike get the things, when will Technicon get the things that they need in order to start reviewing this immediately? Yep. Within a week. Okay. Within a week. Jerry, a question for you real quick, if I may? Sure. Uh, as you're going through this process and you're seeing where PennDOT's at. Bill talked about uh, speed bumps that you guys tripped over, and you know, I had heard things about that with some of the, the uh, permit processes with PennDOT. What are your what are your uh, perspective thoughts on where we're going to be at with this phase two permitting? Um, 
Do we foresee any speed bumps? Do we foresee anything? And what, do you, what is your estimated timeline in getting that permitting back from that dot? Yeah, so so because so the signal plan will have to be reviewed. Well, it'll be reviewed in house by PennDOT, um, and that will probably take the 30 day period for them to review it. Um, concurrent with that, we submitted the removal of the of the existing hill road. Now that will probably be done in house simply because it's not that complicated. It's you're going to saw cut, you're going to plant some grass, you're going to remove some some bituminous. Uh, that'll probably be done in house, and that's generally a a lot of times we just take uh, land development plans, mark them up, and have some segment and offsets. Um, it's really not that complicated. This will probably be slightly more involved because of the removal of the left turn lane on 272. We'll have to remove some pavement striking and, and, and change that. So I don't. But again, it, it's it, this is very minor, minor things compared to what we what we've already done. And because we've essentially set it up to, for this to come in immediately after, I don't I don't think there should be. Any Jared, explain what you mean by in-house as opposed to the alternative. Yeah, yeah so the way that PennDOT, just because of the, the amount of applications that they get to, um, they, they, they receive on a daily basis, they don't have the capacity to review all of our design plans. So they hire, um, and I think now they have probably three or four different um, consultants that they use to review their plans. Um, you know, Pannoni, McMahon, just to name a couple of them. Uh, PennDOT will take them and then they will, they will say, hey, can you guys review these, they'll go through them, and then we get those comments back. Um, when it's not that complicated, they will keep it in-house. So the guys at PennDOT will, will go through the plans, they will check, make sure it meets the standard, and then they send back to us. That's generally a shorter time frame. I would anticipate the removal of Hill Road being probably on that path, um, and then the restriping will be associated with the, with the signal. Uh, which which may go to the third party, but again, it's, it's not too complicated. It's simply restriping them in this thing left turn lane. So, so a non-complicated. It's right. The complicated yeah, stuff's over. over. Yeah, so today was all the complicated. It takes how long usually? Yep. On average. And how long does that take? A, a non-complicated one. It's probably two to three weeks. We should review back from there. Got That process can start any time because it's tied to. The relocation of hill and removal of hill. So that permit's in hand, it doesn't go into place until the new hill is built and the old piece of hill is removed. So that, that could really happen concurrently. Again, that's as that's here to that's, that's a minor permit. The bigger item here, again, is the realignment of the new roadway. Plans that we saw a year or so ago were high level concept plans. I don't know if they were considered as roadway plans with cross sections, uh, drainage reviews, or utility complex on hill. Uh, there was a lot of issues out there that were unaddressed at the time. Sight lines, uh, where the driveways were going to go for uh, Mr. Zimmerman with his potential driveways. So there was a lot of unknowns at the time. But we had a pretty high level concept, I believe, of the way the alignment was going to occur on the hill. So that's, that's, as I recall, that was the last time we saw plans and then it got taken off. You know, at the same time that there was right ways that were to be dedicated as part of, you know, for the right of not just the driveway. So phase two is going to include some sort of subdivision or plan, like with those terminology, what we need to do to create a right way for the public to really go through. That's the more critical one, to get those plans and to get those reviewed and how is it impacted with the township property out here, there's drains, there's wells out here. So there's, there's a lot going on in this back there that was, everybody knew about, but again, we haven't seen anything yet to see final engineering like or even preliminary engineering. So now that you say that, that was right after I started. I had seen as well as a concept plan. I didn't see anything else. We were sort of talking about the way the left turns and it was stopped and how the treatment of the hill was going to be. It was going yeah, to be a stop sign here. Right. Right. It was yeah. going to be a curve. We were looking at the radius, make sure trucks can make the turns. I mean, it was a lot of that, that type of design right there. And that's, and that's not going to be done by you guys, correct? That's done by correct. Uh, the engineer. So, yeah. so, and then just so we're all on the same page. When, when I commented to Mr. Burton that I was going to provide information next week, including the timeline and our preliminary plans, uh, John may be more copy only, but the current set of preliminary plans as it exists today include full stormwater management, full profile, profiling of the road with conflicts identified, uh, et cetera. So all the things John mentioned, we actually have a pretty good handle on it. So maybe that just was never reviewed because it was around that time we said, hey, let's stop the game off. So maybe we stopped the review, but that's what we have in hand. We're pretty far along.
So we'll have that within the week as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it pulled together. And, um, we haven't touched that part of the plan, and I know we've made a couple of minor revisions on site, so I told my engineer to make sure it ties in exactly right. And within a week, I'll, I'll be sending that. Along those lines, Bill, how does It'll be informal, though. I don't want to make yeah. a formal land development submission with it. I'll right. send it to Tommy and the consultants. That was one of my questions, and then the <laughs> other one was Has this been run? Is this part of your coverage under NPDES? As part We're going to have to expand our. We're going to have to expand the LOD so on that. One thing we are debating, we actually started talking about that a couple of weeks ago, whether this should be a standalone NPDES or a major mod to ours. We right. think a major mod makes more sense. Yeah, I would but then that, that that's up to that them. prevents us from closing out the. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, and, it, and that just all plays in kind of your <clears throat> question was about earth moving, you know, that coverage, that review by conservation districts and DET. It'll be part of my review, but obviously, ultimately, they'll have to get that modification or a new NPDES permit. Because we have an existing permit, a lot of the time it takes the conservation district and DEP to review and approve is right. administrative completeness and all that. That's why we're, we're leaning toward a major modification of the existing permit. Okay. So we, we, we have made that way. I have done a poor job communicating that will no longer be able to do that. Last question. My last question, because I had yes, a resident ask me, is the criteria is still the same? Uh, five to eight trucks a day, no semis, Monday through Friday, uh, Monday through Friday operations, eight no, to five? Nothing has changed from the testimony that Pure Cycle gave. I, I don't have that summary in front of me, but what that was has not changed. Um, just real quick, I know you have more items on your agenda. I just wanted to address three things you brought up. Real brief. Take your one, time. Take your time. Color. Yes, we're going to be, it's not going to be just concrete. <laughs> we have a, a whole uh, color scheme uh, that will be painted with, with high quality paint, uh, low maintenance, high quality paint. So it's going to look a lot nicer than it looks now. Uh, Pink, blue, purple, orange. <laughs> We're thinking of a bright pink with maybe yellow accents. Yeah, <laughs> so they got even more. Now, so we got pretty, pretty <laughs> muted, uh, you know, versions of, of white and, and gray. It's the color scheme. Uh, number two is the landscape berm. I think it is at the design height right now, but what it's missing is the landscaping that's going to be planted on top of it, and that's, gonna, that's really where a lot of your buffering is going to happen for about right after COVID. Um, that'll be done whenever we, we do landscaping for the site. Sure. Um, and three is, you brought up RACP. Um, I don't know if that was on the agenda tonight to be signed. Six months is sort of the deadline for the township to sign it, but there's no reason it couldn't be signed uh, prior to that. Those grant funds are part of our funding for the project, so we need access to that. Uh, so I don't know if that is on the agenda tonight, or what, what yeah, the status of that is. Not on the agenda. No. Is there anything I need to do on my end? No. 